So this is a, uh, a Fokker D7. It's uh, a 1918 design. It was built though as a home built. Uh, started in 1993 and was finished in 2009. It was built by a guy named Roger Freeman down in Texas. The owner is not an airplane person. Uh, he doesn't, doesn't fly, he's not a pilot. He just likes history, he likes World War I history, and he likes World War I aviation history. So he decided he wanted a Fokker D7, so he had the resources to be able to afford to pay somebody to build him a Fokker D7, and, and that's what he did. Roger Freeman, who built the airplane, is kind of a specialist in World War I airplanes. He knew how to make it authentic. The aircraft is actually constructed pretty much uh, like it was in 1918. It, uh, it's still tubing, uh, welded together. The Germans were the first ones to have steel tubed aircraft. So this has the same structure design. It has uh, wood spars and ribs, and then uh, it's covered in sinkonite actually. One big difference of the airplane, it has a, a Gypsy Queen 30 aircraft engine, and originally it would have a Mercedes. This has a lot less uh, torque, but this is a good, comparable engine for the Mercedes. The wings, if you look at them in plan form, they look like Hershey bar wings. They're constant cord, front to back, but the thickness tapers. They're thin at the tips and thick at the, at the center, so there's only two ribs the same in each wing. And they're cantilever wings. They're both one-piece wings that go all the way across. The bottom wing goes all the way across and then bolts up under the fuselage. Theoretically, the end struts out at the ends of the wings aren't even needed. It's a printed fabric. It's another German innovation where they actually printed this, they call it lozenge uh, camouflage pattern. It's a bunch of six-sided shapes that are all different shapes that are all kind of overlapping together. So they use this printed fabric. You cover the airplane, put a couple of coats of clear on it, and you're done. This is modern Dacron Seconite fabric, but it is printed in the authentic manner and uh, finished with the tapes cut out of the same material. That adds to the authenticity of it. The pilot that had this color airplane was named uh, Wilhelm Hippert. Uh, he, he was a very well-known German World War I ace, not, not in modern times, but back then. If you note on the top wing, it says Julie on there. Well, Hippert had his girlfriend's name on, which was Mimi. Uh, so Buck, who owns the airplane, his wife's name is Julie, so he thought he might get some points. He told us, yeah, I thought I'd get points, but I didn't. You know, to fly the aircraft is like a normal antique airplane is what I've been telling people. So if you are used to flying an antique, uh, you would probably be used to flying this. It flies fairly well. You know, it's, it's very beginning of aviation really, only 15 years in aviation. And the Germans were very, you know, advanced, but it, it still does fly a little bit corky. I say it, it flies horribly fun. This is the third Fokker D7 I've flown. I've flown 11 different World War I types. As World War I airplanes go, it's one of the top two or three probably as far as flying qualities. 99% of World War I airplanes are heavy on the ailerons, are tail heavy, and elevator works good and rudder works pretty good. But with the fat wings, it's got a fat airfoil. It was another Fokker innovation. The stall is very docile. What makes this unique is that it's, it's a 1918 design and there's not too many people out here flying a 1918 aircraft. There are some kit builds that are replicas, but nothing of this uh, magnitude. A lot of them are uh, seven eight scale or completely built differently than a, a real true Falker with the, the wings and, and everything. Flying into here in Oshkosh, the, everyone has loved the aircraft. So it's been a constant flow of people lots of questions. You know, a lot of people want to know because they've never really seen a D7. So it, it's been fun. The D7 is very, very unique. 